Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Jen. This is the Mindfulness Movement and Exercise Podcast. This is part two of episode six. Before we get into it, just a brief recap of last time. Last time I gave you the world's shortest history of yoga. And then we spoke with Carrie Awerko. Carrie is a yoga teacher and movement teacher. She discussed some of her yoga journey. She also talked about the importance of play in the practice and what that is and what it meant, what it means to her. Before we get into part two, go ahead and come into a comfortable seated position. Make a fist with your left and your right hand and begin tapping a rhythm on your legs. The rhythm can be whatever you want. See if you can make the rhythm smooth. What does the rhythm sound like? What does the rhythm feel like? And then go ahead and relax. So we used a tapping variation last time as well. And this particular tapping variation really focuses your attention on the rhythm. And by focusing your attention on something that is making sound, because the rhythm makes a sound, it makes a sound audi audibly, auditorily. It also makes a sound internally. But by focusing on this rhythm, you reduce extra noise. Remember that noise is unwanted distractions. Carrie mentioned rhythm and finding that internal rhythm when she began, when she took up running many, many years ago. It's the same rhythm that she finds in dance, it's the same rhythm that many of us can find in any sort of movement that we participate in. What activities do you do to create an internal rhythm? And what activities do you do that focus your attention? With that, let's go ahead and get into part two of the podcast, where we will continue talking with Carrie about this thing called yoga and this thing called play. you bring play into a practice that because if again if I'm not mistaken I've only done a tiny bit of Iyengar it's got pretty strict rules and pretty strict alignment and you're supposed to you know look a certain way so how do you how did you kind of merge this idea of play with this idea of a relatively strict um, yeah. philosophy yeah so it started for me um, well, I had gone to study in Pune and I observed BKS Iyengar, who seemed to have, and, and some of his students in the practice room um, that were like, li lived in Pune and were there all year round, um, taught at the Institute, how, you know, some people would might not define it as play, but they would experiment all the time. They were always experimenting. They were always trying stuff. And I did observe playful behavior amongst those assistants and teachers who weren't, you know, at the, they weren't Gita Guruji or Prashant right. or, you know, um, the, the direct familial disciple, but, uh, or offspring literally, but they, <laughs> <laughs> but they would, they were especially like I used to stay in the practice room really long time. I would, stay everybody left right so the interesting stuff happened when everybody else left and i always too, that's i'm like hanging around i'm like in my <laughs> inversions i'm lingering in my practice because i'm like the shit good shit happens when everybody leaves the asana hall and then it would get interesting and gita would like play with them give me ideas and i'd be like i'm like taking it all in you know and just going okay this is different 
And this is interesting. Like what's happening here is interesting. So I just gave myself permission to do that. And then I started doing it more and more. And I, and I, because I was in a system, um, and, you know, with all these rules and levels and blah, 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 I <laughs> would start to circ circumvent. So I'm like, okay, well, how can I, so how can I um, play, but like break <laughs> rules, but like not look like I'm breaking the rules. So I created this series called play because I'm not an Iyengar. I don't pay my dues anymore. I don't identify right. my as an but, but I, you know, I went through all the tests. I did all the levels. I jumped through all the flaming hoops and um, survived to tell the tale. So um, survived to still play. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, I'm still playing, playing more than ever. So that's what it did. Tempered me in that way. So <laughs> I would, um, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to make this like series of videos where, because I had experimented with doing different things with the chair, because Gita actually came from Gita, where she said, one point, she said, you know, I used to do all those arm balances. This is Gita Yengar. And she um, said, I used to do all that. And then now the body won't do it, you know. And so she says, but I, I, I have the feeling. I know the feeling. So she's like, I can still create that with other things. It might not look like that to anyone else but I know what it feels like, like, you know, so I was so intrigued by that. I thought, oh, that's such a good, I can really work with that. So I thought, <laughs> let me make, let me like take the chair because I, and that was because I was in Poland. I was, went there to teach. It was like, I had jet lag. It was two in the morning. I can't sleep. Um, and they, and my host had brought me props. And one of those props happened to be a bright, like a hot pink, it was a hot pink yoga chair. And I was like looking at that thing and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do shit with this thing because I can't sleep. So I'm like sticking it in my body in weird places. I'm like, not, it's not a chair because I'm like jet lagged and delusional and I'm not even seeing a chair. So one thing I never did was sit on it, but I turned it upside down and I was like hanging over it. And I'm like, and then I'm going, okay, this feels really good. Like, oh, that's really interesting. Oh my God, look what you're doing. And then it just oh, it was like, you know, it was like this weird middle of the night jet lag, like, altered state and then the pink chair and then sh this weird stuff was like a trip you know but the stuff that came out of that and then that like started this whole thing I thought okay that's what I'm going to do I'm going to call this thing playful practice with the chair and yeah. I'm going to do all these advanced poses with the chair <laughs> and there would be like the simpler version and the less supported version but still using the chair and like it just became the rules for the dance so instead of having a yangar rule I'm like oh, I have to use the chair. That's the rule that I'm giving myself for this creative experiment. And it, what it did is it just opened up in me like, but you could do that with anything. Like you could do that with the bolster, you could box. You don't have to do yoga. <laughs> yeah, it's, you could, like, like these things, like it just opened up this hole because what was actually happening was connecting to myself, to connecting to others and their situation, to how, the, the big thing is how might we do these things? How might we create an experience? So how might we create an experience? How might we build some thing, you know, like, and so it builds a practice or, you know, build a practice for your students, like, it 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 became not about the chair and not about the props and not about any of that, but about the willingness to go in there and say, what if, and how might I? And say yes, like say yes when you get that idea. Because sometimes in the practice, like sometimes you're like, I just gotta get through this practice. I don't wanna distract myself with every like thing that pops into my brain, you know? <laughs> so that, you know the feeling I'm sure, so yeah. <laughs> You have a limited amount of time. You're like, all right, we're just doing yeah, this right so now. This, like, so, so I have my little notepad. I might jot something down. So if I need to come back to it later, and it usually doesn't excite me as much later, but that's okay. So I, but there are practices where I get say in this one, yes, you can diverge in this one. You can take that little off road. You can, you know, you can get off the path 
that you're on and you can climb that tree if you want and you can dip in the water there if you want. And if it's interesting and you're like, okay, I wanna be all about the water, then then for that day, that's what it's about. So, um, because I know I will practice every day. I am not afraid of losing the practice. It, I never have, do you know? Like, <laughs> it is like sleeping and eating and anything else that I do to sustain myself as a living human. I practice and it might look very different depending on what's happening. Like when I had COVID, obviously the practice looked different, but, um, but it is, it's this communal time to commune and, um, and is nourishing for me because that's what it's about, you know, and it's about connecting me to that life force, that thing that, 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 that helps me keep learning because I don't know what the point is if we're not, <laughs> you know, at least for me, I know people will have different inclinations, but I love learning. I love, I love it. And I love what I observe when I put myself into situations that challenge me. I like the process of observing and then kind of trying to understand it even if I don't completely, and I know, oh, I'm going to do that again. And I will have new insight because every time you do it and you're present to the experience on multiple levels. So that's where it's a little different than like the Yangar idea of put your toe here and blah, 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 and inner to the outer. And because I think that can serve a purpose. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that there isn't, uh, you know, that one can't do that and have very positive outcomes, but if it's the only thing you do, then, um, you know, what is the, what are we really learning? Well, we learn to follow instructions really well. <laughs> right, right. You know, <laughs> yes. follow instructions really well. Um, and, you know, even if the that's it, I, I don't know. It just, uh, I, I was, always in the class like wanting to you know so teacher would say something and I'm like wanting to do <laughs> what if I do that? <laughs> you know it would be like oh Jesus just do what they say just for right now just do what they say because you could get in trouble <laughs> yes. and I did I did I did like got in trouble <laughs> I would feel like I know I go to Mysore classes sometimes and you know you're allowed to kind of do what oh, you want in Mysore yeah. but you're supposed to stay within the realm of the series and I would be doing something totally different. yeah I would I could see that because like in Ashtanga so for me like I did and I, I liked learning the first and second series and there was something mm -hmm. I enjoyed about it but I after a while I'm like it's like a series on this car like I just I'm going to <laughs> keep doing this sagittal thing you know and like <laughs> I know, yes, turn and you twist and you back bend. But there was something about like another another other. And like at a, after a while, I, I would enjoy that sometimes. Like I would, I would be like, oh, I just want to drop into that. But then, oh, I wanted to move in other ways. I just, my body and brain and nervous system just craved it. And so, um, a yangar, though it didn't satisfy that in the way that dance does, it was more creative. Like it, the potential for creativity was so much more expanded. Like you had, you could experiment with things, you know, because that is what Bikesa Yangar did. He was always playing, even if he, I don't want to say he didn't allow others to play, but that was the kind of the thing was an attitude like, well, he created all this so you don't have to. Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? He, he worked yeah. it all out for us. And I'm like, well, that's a bummer because the whole <laughs> freaking joy of it, the fun of it is that. Like, you know, I don't want him to freaking make the recipe. <laughs> you know, like when it's strength, like it's like following a program and strength training. I think all of that's great. But at some point I'm like, I want my own fucking recipe. <laughs> you want a little more sugar? You want a little salt? Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't seen, like, I don't know, like my body really 
seems to respond, I'm doing pretty well to going to following my my input like I have a disciplined practice, but I also step outside that box. I really do, you know, and I just try stuff because before that it was all made up. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, things were like, you know, experiments and see what is the outcome. And okay, it seems that people respond well if there's this loading pattern and over this period of time, all that, but we're all still different. And I think that, that, and you know, what's the best thing is the thing that you do is the thing that you do consistently. And when you love doing it and when you like doing it and when it brings you joy, I am convinced that you have a better outcome. I don't know how that is measured, but I think if you're participating in something and it is like lighting up your, you know, your neuromodulators and neurotransmitters and like all this stuff in a way that that is that is 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 in not only enhancing the whole learning process, but is affecting you profoundly physiologically, probably helping you with whatever that you know measurable goal is on some level, even if we can't specifically, I don't know, identify what the mechanism is. I mean, it's like the research of of who is it, Ellen Langer at at mm -hmm. Harvard, right? Like mm -hmm. what's going on there when people are <laughs> You know, that clockwise experiment or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, that is interesting stuff. So that interesting. Really interesting stuff. How we think about something. Or like the stress, re the current sort of stress research. It's like if you think that it's, it's not even that current. But like, if you think that it's bad for you, it's bad for you. Right. Right. It's worse for you. Like if you, but if you don't think that, it you know, we're, this is different than chronic stress, but if you have a different perspective on it, your physiology changes. Yes. And, and that is, so that kind of goes back to, to the idea of yoga. Like if we're, what is yoga? You know, so you had outlined and like, you know, answered those bigger questions. And even that question of like, yo, right? To the, whatever it is, yo, you know. Yes. You know, know that, yo, you know, unity. And you said to unify the body and the mind, but I don't know if the ancient texts are saying that. I, I, my understanding is that it's unifying the individual soul and the universal soul. If for people who are in that, because I think yoga, it's called a philosophy. I think it's kind of a religion. I don't know for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, um, but the idea that we how whatever those are words and it does it like yeah they matter but the experience matters more than the information I think like the experience is information I've been thinking a lot about that lately people remember experiences mm -hmm. you can we have so much information information is everywhere and conflicting from it but what if the experiences that we have really stick with us and potentially positive or negative, right? They they stick. And so the experience of feeling that like all of your cells are somehow being like nourished by something, you know, where you just feel glowing, you feel like alive and you feel, you know, whatever age you are, you feel like a kid. Like you feel it. Everything feels just like when you were a kid. And that is like a sense of, and it's not just like when you were a kid, like you might be having an experience of feeling so connected to everything and everyone, right? It's just something that is unifying, something that is truly integrative. And if whatever you're doing, so that goes to the question, people love to debate this, like is such and such yoga, is this yoga? Right. That's yeah. But if it's creating that, if it's, if it's, if it's allowing for that experience to emerge, who's to say, because who made it up? Who gets to decide, you know, who wrote the dictionary on it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
And I'm sure there's probably another dictionary that says something else. So we can find a different definition, but that's where it's so interesting. Like your little, your podcast, I've listened to all of the ones that you've put out so far is this line of questioning. It's very, um, I think it's important that we, we swim in that. And that seems to be what you're doing. Like there was a lot that I have to re-listen to some things because there was a, I love the one with the PE teacher. Oh, she's amazing. You two would love each other. Like you guys have I such similar philosophies. What she was saying, I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> she's all about play as well. And I oh. just think that I feel I, what's what I find in this world that I live in, this fitness movement world that I live in is there's so much noise and so much argument over what's right. Yep. I feel like we're missing the point. I agree 100%. And I think that's true in yoga. I think it's true in, and and what I've <laughs> learned from, like I was so in the yoga silo, like for a long time, you know, really in the yoga silo. So I know you climb out and then you're like, oh, look at these people, these FRC people. And oh, look at these, these DNS people. And oh, look at these PI people. And whatever, right? There's all this, oh, zeal. I, I've I've gone through all of yeah, yeah I yes know, I know <laughs> and so it's it's but it's it's not I'm not saying it's the same but it's st we're still dealing with the same. it just <laughs> depends what like camp or silo you're in and that's where I find myself and it I know it's hard for some people and like with branding and all that like I don't care I am a synthesizer like I like to integrate things that's just who I am. I, you know, I go like this and I try to feel like, I feel like there's patterns and there's so much that's connecting. That's interesting. Like, I don't want to have it. I don't want to live like this. And I want to think like that. And um, I understand what it's like to go into that sometimes for a, an experience yes. of a perspective. I'm 100% behind that. And I did it for decades, <laughs> but it did it. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it's just interesting. Maybe for some people that leads to, oh, you know, like, a. but for me, I had, it, 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 I had to let myself, uh, I guess, be connect to my demon, you know, <laughs> And, and that's the one who is, um, uh, I don't like, I love it when I have dance teachers that are like, don't worry about getting it wrong. Like I was in a Fosse class today. And once again, like this, this brilliant teacher, she's just, she's a veteran performer. Uh, Bob Fosse's just done so many shows on Broadway and like has amazing stories. And she's there. She'll always drug do these things where she's like, what is it that brought you here? You know, like something brought you in this room and it doesn't like, nah, like we can clean it up or whatever. Like that's not the point. And she'll find a way of saying that at every single class or I have a tap teacher and like tap is hard. I'm just going to say it's hard. <laughs> I didn't grow yeah. up tap dancing, but I really <laughs> love it. Like I love it. It's hard though. I'm a novice and beginner, although I'm getting better. I, I, <laughs> I'm like, you know, if it's Broadway tap, it's a little easier because it's like more kind of traditional dance steps with, with tap, with rhythm, but rhythm tap, like these are the, you know, these people are like, they're just serious about like <laughs> rhythms with the feet in exactly a certain way and it's like complex rhythms. And uh, one of my teachers, and she's another one, the like seasoned tapper, still performing, but she's just done this forever. And she's and she'll just tap that whole class she's like amazing like 90 minutes and we are not like so I was like I just need to break. <laughs> I'm just like I just need to not think for 10 seconds that's all and so <laughs> but she but I love how it's just you just and you like some point you surrender you're like I'm just gonna keep doing this and it's weird the whole motor learning observation I just love it I just love to be like okay I'm just learning like oh it's just so fascinating to watch me learn about the things I'm learning about because I'm putting myself in a context where I'm really in this place where I don't have, especially with the rhythm top, as much to relate it to. Now I do a lot of swing dance and Lindy hop and there's a connection there. But other than that, um, and it's fascinating because 
you are repeating these things you're doing and she'll say, you know, she'll just keep reminding us. Sometimes she'll be like, just make it just really travel, you know, and which you'll do more Broadway time, maybe a little less in rhythm time. So you're getting to shift your weight or just, just make it really big, make that mistake really big, you know, uh, like, like just like so many good things where to get us, because if you don't shift your weight, like it's like, if you don't bend your knees and you don't shift your weight, like real basic things, yeah. but it has to happen. And she'll, or she'll have us close our eyes and you know, we'll do some like hard, like com complex uh, step combination and she'll say okay now do it with your eyes closed like the fuck with the eyes closed you know and then and, <laughs> and so but close your eyes and so but i know like she's like no just tune into your feet and then you're and it's really interesting like suddenly it's like because in order to tap that some part of you has to understand the rhythm and the and and understand where your weight is in order to know are you articulating with the back of the front of the floor tap or the front of the back heel or like what like the stuff that you can't so much think about you have to feel it and let your nervous system work it out let your body self-organize and create the context for that self-organization and it is so much like that is what's happening like she will teach you I'm like that's freaking brilliant teaching like it's just like it watch is. this thing and, um, and yeah, there might be things like, you know, I'm just not into any more like, oh, that teacher said that, and that's not anatomically correct. Or, oh, they use that <laughs> or like, oh, that cue, I don't care. Like I'm an adult and I can <laughs> like reframe it, you know, <laughs> you know, I can reframe it <laughs> because life is short. Yeah. And there, and there's opportunities to learn from all manner of circumstances and people and situations. So it's like, where are we placing our attention? And what are we really observing? And like, I'm observing my learning process via these things that I'm learning. And, and dance is one of those places I, I just absolutely love uh, because I love it. And I just, when I start doing it, I can just do it for hours. But I also love, you know, the dances that are more, dances more familiar, they're more inclined to want to do. But I really love putting myself in those situations where I'm like, that's uncomfortable. Do you know, that's like, that's, that's where the learning happens is when I'm in, I mean, there's learning happening everywhere, but like more yeah. learning happens when I'm in these situations where I'm like, okay, this is making me uncomfortable. Like I'm up against like, you know, like she threw some step at us last night and where, and I'm like, I don't, I have no idea what you just did. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or she'll like clap out a rhythm and you're like, like usually she claps it out, I can hear it, but she might tap it. She's like, now clap it. And you're like, oh. So it just, it's, um, and I and I see, I like sometimes I'm usually just so focused, but I also like to sometimes just look around the room and see, because you say you can be also so like, it's me, I'm having trouble. And then you look around, you're like, everybody's, <laughs> we're all having trouble. <laughs> together. It's a, you know. together. And in different ways. And everyone's yeah. dealing with their own learning process. They're all, we're all dealing with this whole, this little way of, of inputs and outputs. <laughs> You know, input process, output, input process, output. And and everyone's in that. And it, it, it's just, it's it's a beautiful thing to be doing it also with other people because there is something about why are we there? Why do we gather to do that? There is something. It's like my Fosse teacher said, there's just something that keeps bringing you in that room, you know? <laughs> Especially if you're not like a professional, you know, there's people in there and they're, they're there because they want to get the next gig. But right. then there are those that are there because they want to dance. Like they really want to dance. They want to dance with others and want to, to challenge their brain and their body in a way that really, even when it's hard, it feels good. It yeah. feels good. Like it nourishes you just like you walk out of there. Like there are times I walk in, I'm like, that just really did something to my to my brain. Like some major flossing and some <laughs> happened in there. <laughs> the plaque's gone. I don't know. 
totally. <laughs> a clearing of some sort. Feel like that. It can feel like that. That's how I felt like when I got back, like, or like during COVID, I, I started dancing a lot in my apartment then because I was just like, ah, I just need to like 3D myself. And then, but even, you know, just being that type of movement that just, it's, I think it has a lot to do with the vestibular system and the visual system and this integration, these higher order systems where when they are being fed enough of a challenging stim, challenging stimuli, it really feels good. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you're just like, ooh, that was the multivitamin that not just my body needed, but my brain needed. And I tend to think it's also, I don't like to like zero in on brain parts because I think there's a little too much of that. And it doesn't seem yeah. to work exactly that way. Like, so, you know, right. but then the cerebellum, like sometimes I'm just like, Amy, that. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> like that is such an important place for me like I don't know you know like I like the intending to do it and it not having that outcome and the process of getting that to to a to uh align or connect you know what I mean like you intend to do something and that is the outcome isn't what you intend and then you keep repeating until it it is and that's a fascinating process <laughs> <laughs> and I think you can have that in yoga poses, but I think that in yoga, one of the challenges is with the asana, which I still I like. It's an amazing, amazing practice. I do it every day. I love it. But um, it's feeding a, sometimes different things because you're doing, unless you're doing truly new things, um, you're having a familiar experience. And granted, you're different and it's a new moment and everything's changed, but it's still, it's still the, 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 the song is the same. The notes, if you're playing a piece of music, like Yo-Yo Ma will always play the same piece of music on his cello. When he starts playing his cello every day, he says, it's always the same because he's, he wants to know how his cello, Petunia, <laughs> is doing that day. <laughs> him as well and so this song helps him understand how's petunia you know was it cold last night or you know <laughs> so you sleep you know the whole <laughs> yeah, yeah so i think there's something to be said for that piece of it and i also feel like some and i think maybe some people more than others but i i do like i like novelty i i do i also like repetition but novelty is something that I seem to be drawn towards. I, I, I can relate to this pretty significantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even if it's just a little twist on the familiar. Sometimes I'm like, I don't need a completely different warm up. Although sometimes I appreciate it when dance teacher doesn't exactly the same, exactly. Like, um, you can change it. Like, um, you know, <laughs> and, and like, doing a different new combo today so like was there something in the combo that you could teach <laughs> warm up yeah totally <laughs> i mean i don't want to tell them how to teach but like you know sometimes i'm just like hey this it, and then you go to a different class and it's like oh you're alive again because it's like okay this is a different warm up. i gotta pay attention i have to pay attention what are we doing here like you know and part of it is warming up your attention so yes. it's it's not just your body, like you're warming up your pat, your capacity to pay attention, um, not to your body, but also to external stimuli, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that stuff has to be for me anyway, it's, I need to warm that up. I you think know? most of us do. Yeah. Well, yeah. so I don't know. I think we've covered a lot, haven't we? This always covered helps a ton. when I'm on a podcast. I'm like, get kind of chatty. <laughs> no, that was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, all of your insights are, it's just really helpful to talk to someone who's did the yoga thing for a long time and then still does it, but has been able to evolve it within, you know, so that it fits what you need. Yeah, it. it I feel that that's what it continues to to do and will change and continue. And I feel blessed to be able to allow it to be 
plastic in that way. You know, like I, I don't have to have this fixed thing that never changes because I'm not a fixed thing that never changes. Um, and neither are the people that practice or study with me. So you end up attracting, I think, a, a group, a tribe, a community of people who have similar inclinations. And I don't know that it's for everyone. That's the thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, like that people have different amount of time in their lives and different energy levels and interests and activities and hobbies and families. And, you know, it's that the, you're going to do what you can do that gives you, that nourishes your body and your mind um, in the ways that uh, that support your existence. And it's going to look different for everybody. That's why the one practice, I think it, you know, it's definitely, there's something beautiful in it. Um, and, uh, there are those who are like completely down with that. And I applaud them. I'm like, good for you. That's just not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's a, and you have another, another book coming out. Don't you? I just read that. I, do. I, do. I have like a thing, like, I don't know. Ooh. I write books. I don't, <laughs> I am amazed at that. Really? <laughs> It's like, it's, it's part of my daily practice is writing. So it just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When you write every day, you end up with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Art. That's so, no, that's, that's what all great writers say. <laughs> and yeah, that's, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and yeah. how can people find, cause you're teaching in Europe pretty soon, right? Yeah, I'm going to be teaching in Italy in um, September, um, and my information's on my website, which is uh, my name, so uh, www.carioworko.com, so, and that's me on Instagram as well, I just kept all the printing, <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm going to be teaching in the little town like it's called the city of art it's beautiful sort of like the santa fe of italy you know a village on the tuscan uh coast and i've taught there for for several years pre-pandemic and then went back again last year when uh, we started traveling again and it's really i love it there i love the people and we have this big gymnasium <laughs> oh that's big so like, yeah this is what i want and so uh i'm so excited to be teaching there this year um, I'm going to be teaching in New York. I was supposed to, I'm, I'll probably do some pop-up classes this August. And my, my dear friend who runs a studio yoga, Maya down in Chelsea's like, give me dates. <laughs> and so, but definitely this fall, I'm going to be back teaching some, uh, series of classes in New York and traveling and going to LA and in, uh, February, probably teaching there and then Dublin in, um, April, um, I'm just not going to travel as much as I did pre-pandemic. I was on the road all the time. Yeah. More, I was away more than I was here. I have a dog now, um, puppy. And I also just COVID the, uh, the lockdown or the pandemic or whatever, just rearranged things. It not only rearranged my business, but my, it helped me reprioritize because I, I was as wonderful as it was. And as much as I learned and I learned a lot um traveling around I've seen like pretty much gone all over the world <laughs> um I don't want to be traveling that much I don't think it's necessarily that great for the for the body to be changing time zones all the time you know yeah and I like what I'm doing in New York I love what I'm studying I love the stuff that I'm doing right now so I'm pretty content to 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 uh to nourish this thing that's happening now and um, and I have an online uh, uh, platform called the Playground where we have tons of, and Jen's been on it in the in the I teacher program that we did and people loved you. Oh, so thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'd love to have you do more. In fact, I think the only way I'll ever finish my book is if I wrote it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm saying it right now like that because I just you know I'm I'm a. I do write, I discipline myself to write because I put out a newsletter every week that I try to really write something that's somewhat substantive. 
varies from week to week on what I put out, but it's definitely a practice and it's all the stuff I think about. I, I am writing all the time. Like I have notebooks, just one after the other, like I'm constantly writing. But um, I, I think that my initial idea um, has evolved with what happened and where I am right now, what happened during the pandemic. And I really love the investigation, the, the, the inquiry that I'm living right now that I feel like if I'm going to be writing, I have to write about that. Like, because it's still basically the same theme, but it has a different, um, it's a different uh, emphasis, you know, or way that I'm looking at it. So uh, it's interesting. I love, but I love how you just, you know, you just take something and you're like, write another book on that. That is awesome. That is really awesome. It's so creative and wonderful. So oh, good for you. I look forward to seeing this next one. I'm just, I'm so impressed, really. I have all your books. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> and they're nice and thin. I want to, I just want to say, I appreciate this last one. I'm like, yes, because I think that that's really, that's really good. Like narrow that scope a bit. So it's something that is not only, you know, digestible, but applicable. Yes. Experience, I think, is, is like more potent than just having information. I think so too. It's a good yeah. And as I said, this industry tends to be really loud and I know I can be really loud. So I'm always like, how can I like, <laughs> I'm sort of surprised at how much the fitness industry, uh, wow. Like, um, um, physiotherapy, like ah, these people go through each other. It's like, <laughs> <intense. laughs> it's something, right. I mean, I, I, I like, yeah, I love Adam because I love like just following all this because it's fascinating to see, you know, but, but people really care. Like so people, they really yes. do care. So, but it's um it's interesting. It's so interesting to see the whole all the different camps and strongly, really strongly held perspectives. Um yes. yeah. Yeah. And it's hard when you build a whole business and brand around something that you know, like you can't, if you can't change. Right. It's again, it's the evolution, which I think brings us back to kind of the whole, the whole kind of theme behind today was just, you know, being able to be creative and being able to explore and be yeah. open to your curiosity. Yeah, to definitely. Yeah. And to live that curiosity in the practice, because that's, I think that, I mean, I don't know, like I wasn't alive, then, but like, <laughs> yogis of your you know like they like how did they they practiced yes they practiced yeah. and that you know so so unless you practice unless you do it the thing then it's just sort of a lot of words and argument or you know but it doesn't live and breathe and 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 evolve like that for something to stay relevant, it has to evolve. It just, you know, we talk about that all the time and like the, it's like, it's more like the social dance community because social dance is a fascinating place to look at culture and evolution and influence. Um, it is, and there are people that want to keep things in like a time capsule. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so interesting. You're like, but you know, like there are people are mixing West Coast swing and hip hop and it's like, okay that's what's happening yeah. or you know they it, it, it's but it's so because social dance has always done that like there's so it's just so interesting to see how culture and music influences this like dance is a thing that brings people together and it's an expression of what's happening um the zeitgeist if you will and but there are different forces and factors that are always at play. So the dance is going to change. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, anyway. thank you so much, Carrie. That was such a great conversation. I really appreciate it. And yeah. you guys can thank all. You for me. Yeah. And everyone I could talk to you all day. We could talk all day. We totally could. Like, it's a good thing. We we're totally, not like. In we totally could. Like, this, like, <laughs> wavelength that you're on like it is so interesting <laughs> yeah y'all for better or worse 
I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And I hope you have a wonderful evening, Carrie. Thank you. And the next time we talk, I want to talk pole dance. Oh, pole dance. And I've been doing silks too. So all the things you were talking about with like, Oh, I totally want to do silks. Like, Oh my God. Cause talk about like, you know, you're up there and you're the teacher's like, I need you to put your leg here and you need to draw, like, you need to like flip upside down. You're like, you're like <laughs> no, I think I should come to California and go to silk and pole dance with you. Oh, you totally should. <laughs> yeah. I haven't done either. But you know, Iyengar has a lot of upside down stuff. I know I would love, the problem is like, like I want to dance in this space. So I don't want to have a pole that breaks up the room. Mm. And I'm like, if I started pole, I know I would love it. Oh, you would love it. Like talk about the I vestibular. I, would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I just know I would love it. I, I see what Marlo posts. I'm like, I mean, she's, so good. she's like brilliant, right? It would take decades to get there, but it's still that circular movement are you kidding me yes she, oh she and she comes to new york sometimes if you ever have a chance she's an awesome teacher but i've never done pole it's okay you'd be fine because she's takes a very exploratory approach yeah. very curious I, like I it's, love the stuff she posts her kooky mind i love it i is like so down with it i'm like yes 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 <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Talk to you. Talk to you.